It's a brilliant idea. Thanks very much. Uh, but where, where did such an idea come from? Is this like, got to do a cookbook, I've already done this one, I've already yeah, done that one. Totally. Hats off and muzzle off for not doing a vegan cookbook. Thank because you. although vegan I mean, is... no one will buy it now, but... Uh... Will they not? I don't know they, well, now that it's not... I think they've got enough vegan cookbooks. If listeners to this show, if they've bought the book every week, now have a shelf yeah. of vegan, right. uh, environmentally sustainable cookbooks. We have saved the planet and our guts I on mean, this show. The second book was going to be Green Cravings, but I'll... Uh... Is it, <laughs> do it, do it. <laughs> no, you have to. Like, everybody, they come and they all go... But, um, no, but this, is, this is just... It's, it's, it's really exciting. Uh, thank you very much. Well, I think actually uh, almost fell into my lap the idea um because i would started thinking of how to arrange a cookbook in an interesting way i like to write cookbooks that are useful that i as you've mentioned mm. um arguably some are not and um uh, the first cookbook i did was called on the side and it was basically most of your plate of side dishes so why do you forget about them and uh, arrange your meal about that and with mm -hmm. crave i was thinking i actually had an idea about doing uh, hot or cold food as in what do you want to eat when it's hot and what do you want to eat what do you want to eat when it's cold and that was just a bit binary actually and then I just sort of realised that um, the answer is not working out why you want something, but what you want. And then a very simple question, what do I want tonight? And yeah. usually it's flavour. So fresh and fragrant, tart and sour, chilli and heat, savoury and rich and savoury and cheesy and creamy. And you have um, an element in the book when you're saying you were thinking about doing what do you want to eat when it's hot, when it's cold. Mm. You talk about, because you, you're getting a little bit into the, I mean, you're not getting too Heston on our asses, but no. you, are, you go into some of the science, some yeah. of the what. And you talk about how the weather can affect your cravings. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think there are, if you want to analyse your dinner, if it's mm -hmm. more than just dinner, then you can start to look at things. And weather, I think, was is definitely a driver of what we want. I mean, this, this came out yesterday, um, which was probably the first day in, what, a month, two months of reasonably clement weather yeah. in, in London. And, and I felt relatively smug because I woke up and thought, blue sky, I want to eat something completely different to what I wanted to eat when it was down with rain mm. uh, two days beforehand. But, it, but it's, it, this has been so screwed up, the weather, for the last yeah, month. Yeah. It has made eating very difficult. You know, the life of a restaurant critic is hard. Oh, yeah. uh, and people, oh, we must have sympathy. Thank you for doing it for us. I, I know, I do. I stick my neck out and that's what I do. We all, we all crusade on the front line, essential workers. I, why they don't stand up and applaud every Tuesday at 8pm, I do not know. But wh what happens, it, we, was, you have to eat outside, mm -hmm. which can be great. Al fresco dining last summer would have been marvellous. I went to eat at these places. I have to go to the River Cafe, that sort of thing. I go there and the menu is all this lovely summer burrata with tomatoes and lovely cold this and that and, and i'm going out in three layers thinking i fancy a i want a stew yeah, yeah. you know and i think that the um so many books and i've did I, this is not me plugging i'm saying my previous book was the borough market cookbook which mm. was a seasonal cookbook a classically winter summer spring autumn arranged and the thing about eating seasonally is it works absolutely for the ingredients that are at their peak Mm -hmm. But eating seasonally to me also means what do you feel like eating? What do you feel like cooking? Mm -hmm. And, well, the seasons have been wrong in the last two months. And so weather is more important. I think, what is it like today? Is it hot? Do I, if it's really, really hot on a heat wave, you want that kind of watermelon sad or you want salad or you want something really hot mm -hmm. that makes you sweat. Those are all the classic things that we're told we want to eat when it's hot. Um, and if it's not hot in the middle of the July, you know, seasonal cookbook didn't work. And... Do you, you're obviously celebrating the idea of craving, but there's <coughs> there are elements of craving which are, should we give in to all our cravings? We're told sometimes to resist cravings. You know, you might crave more booze, crave a fag, crave, you know, drugs or, 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 or you know, that kind of a thing. You're, and, we, you know, you, there's a thing of craving, you know, a lot of fast food joints, Big Mac will, will, will you know, I'm loving it. They will, they will try and play on the idea of cravings. Are you saying give in to all your cravings? I think, um, and I don't, I'm definitely not trying to be... Uh, prude when i was saying it but i i um a prude i um those the classic thinking of cravings people think about ice cream chocolate um, mm -hmm. hamburgers that's not this book it's not salt and fat and and sugar it is it is stepping back and thinking what is the freshness that i want and i don't think you should ever feel guilty for eating what you want sometimes if you do want ice cream that's totally fine you dig into that bucket and and enjoy mm -hmm. it but um uh i think also you can well, you're actually not think... not big on sugar in this are you this no is, i looked for with one of the i i don't really eat sweet things again yeah. in my terrible life as a restaurant critic i quite often you miss pudding i skip pudding because um i'll take those free sugar calories in booze thank you very much yeah. uh but also i the i, I often I'll, I'll write about the main because i crave that i crave the things you're talking about the tangy the salt the uh the creamy the cheesy yeah. the, the whatever and by the time i if i if i satisfied those cravings with my with rupert murdoch's bill on my oh, just, tick 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 yeah so I can pay for all of that. You know, had it all on expenses. Why I just don't fancy a, a chocolate cake at the end. And you've actually, but people would often think first of sugar with a craving, and you've not really got. Yeah, that. I was just trying to 
the um, I think if you want a sugar craving, you can have sugar. And there yeah. are there are in, in, I have got like two or three sweet things at the end of each chapter, which was interesting for the chili and heat and the spiced and curried sections. Um, but uh, ultimately, yeah, it's, a, it's largely a savoury book because I think that you start off thinking, what do I want to eat? And you don't necessarily think about ice cream for dessert. Well, you say, you say, well, I know, but children do. So a children, it's quite, it's quite hard, isn't it, to get around children's cravings because the, the standard thing, I've got my kids are eight and ten, and I was once eight and, and ten, um, but uh, it, you say to your mum, I want a, you know, I want a, Mars bar, I want a packet of crisps. Yeah. And he's like, wait until after supper. No, I want it now. I don't want to. But and what? And you go, what's for supper? And they go, spaghetti bolognese. You know, delicious. We go, oh, because you want what's it? Yeah. Kids I'm, have much simpler craving. Well, yeah. My um, we're currently. I've got a, a four year old, and he's um, he's pretty into trying to get an ice lolly for breakfast. So yeah. Um, just trying to get around. I think that is the sh- that is. I mean, that's probably him trying to make, put his foot down rather than his craving. But he's trying to control you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he's doing quite well at it. Yeah. No, they are they are good at that kind of thing. Um, if funnily enough, you see, would you say in the book you spend most your waking hours thinking what am I going to eat next um I th- in some ways those we, we we sort of all do those of us who who love food which yeah, yeah. Like, if it's yeah. not just fuel I think that if you've got any sort of um interest in food and flavor surely you want to know what you're eating next and that's again it's funny it's kids you you I mean I'm going to interrupt but that my kids when they it's, it's they come home from school what's what for dinner yeah. you know, what's for supper and then in the morning they'll, they'll have bread and say what what's in my packed lunch or what and then the, the weekend is what's for lunch what's for, they want to know they want to plan yeah, and that's maybe that's it. This is um, the whole concept of this is trust your intuition, and maybe as a kid you're already into just doing what you. There isn't a forethought thing, is there, with with children? I think it's about what's what's happening next. And as adults, we've got really boring. We start thinking about work and other things, but ultimately, uh, surely if everyone's been sitting at home trying to work out what they're having for lunch because they're working from home, um, maybe that that create that element of knowing what you want to eat next is coming to everyone's mind, not just mine. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's. Do you think you you say you say in the book? You know, one of these things about your book is that it's to help navigate because there's too much choice. Uh, do you do you think there are too many cookbooks about? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, next question. No, yeah. I, no. <laughs> fine. I mean, I. <laughs> no, I think. Um, I think that the point about cookbooks for me is that a good one should be uh, a little bit like an album, um, a music album, where these days we consume music with Spotify and with uh, uh, other directories are available yeah. um, um <laughs> or just singles on the radio and you think and they're all very good and it's great you can see and you can same with recipes you can go to the paper and you can pick the one out you like but in the context of a cookbook if you can make a cookbook like hopefully this one is with a framework that people can uh, get a bit more from as well as it being a nice tactile object like so that's what hopefully cookbooks are like and that's my idea with this where in the, in the context of there being too many recipes that put you into paralysis as to what you want to choose rather than rather than provide direction that's that's what having a framework is all about um, and the, the, you know the, there are what the, are the things that we we don't crave because you're, you're you're and when you talk about when you talk about tangy and sour when you're talking mm-hmm. about um, the spicy one for example when a when a spicy and curried now generally yeah. speaking an Eng, an Englishman like me if you think spicy and curried you, it's takeaway you know that's one of those things that I was I was I was looking at it, I was talking to my producer Rosemary about you know what. What could I actually? What, what can I supply? Well, English cuisine, fresh and fragrant, no. <laughs> Tart and sour, no. Cheesy and creamy, we can do. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's uh, uh, the, the, the tone of the book probably does change. So the, the, that rich and savoury section, the cheesy and creamy, you know, far more likely to have a kind of uh, bra- braised beans with sausages, you know, or mm. the cheesy one, a, a quiche. Or, yeah. or, or a cheesy pie like that that is definitely but then, and then and the other sections but i think the way that many of us eat now is so much more globally influenced that um heat he, chili and heat and tart and sour and stuff they're definitely beyond that but, but it's a guide to how to cook so you say a quiche is there a quiche there is a quiche so if i this is the whole this is the crux okay so you're feeling like something cheesy mm-hmm. and you have a quiche yeah. and it's not bloody cheesy and then it's the same like it's I, things that are meant to be cheesy that aren't cheesy yeah. so like a cheesecake that isn't cheesy which you know cheesecakes well, if you if you go and it's speaking season it's the cricket season it's quite often in a sort of yeah. village cricket tea there'll be you're all quiche yum and it doesn't taste of anything it's just like cladding so hopefully the answer to that is that you've got to use good cheese. Um, right. That is a, it's a hopefully a relatively accessible cookbook wherever you're shopping, but something like the cheese section, you can make your life really easy if you buy nice cheese rather than put a 300 gram block of something that doesn't taste of anything. Mousetrap. Yeah, we've got exactly. It right, exactly. The, the, the sort of same, they've got that one to yeah. five scale. The so, Sainsbury's so, number one mousetrap, yeah. really. I mean, why are you having anything less than six on the scale? <laughs> but um, So yeah, it's a fully, it's a fully cheesy uh, quiche. Um, 
and uh, I, I suppose the caveat to that section is that use of the cheesy in it as well, and the creamy in it as mm. well, because there's a, bas- a, a honeyed basque cheesecake, mm-hmm. which is cream cheese, like you can't get any cheese in that, but also it doesn't taste particularly cheesy, but it's kind of hopefully will hit the, the creamy, it should have, but it, notes but it needs to have just be slightly sour, it needs yeah. that tang from the yeah, cream yeah, cheese, yeah. otherwise it, it's bland, because there has been a sort of blandification of food. Do you think? Oh, I think I think that they, yeah, yeah, to, to to some degree, or is that just not to, true? What if, to maybe I suppose it's um, you uh, maybe it's easier for that palate, isn't it? If you if you just have sugar or bland, yeah. or hot. So yeah, the, the good thing about hopefully good recipes is they always have have a, a balance of flavour. So I've said that it's all arranged by flavour, but it doesn't mean that the tart and sour section is just sour watermelon sweets. Um, <laughs> And not actually, actually, no, there's not, there's not any in there. Um, it, it's interesting though because the craving it is a brilliant way to look at cooking because you've got to deliver the thing that you want. And for me, eating out and eating restaurants, when I see a menu, when I when I'm going to eat, a, I, a set of expectations which are based around cravings mm-hmm. come to mind. If you're craving a fry up, you know, mm. I, my particular thing, I then want I want it to be streaky bacon, I want it to be crispy but not burnt to a crisp like American sort of Oscar Mayer. But I want it to have a sort of salt, certain saltiness. I want the eggs to be so go and have it in a greasy spoon, and it's not, and it's a piece of flabby back bacon right. and it's and, and the baked beans are the wrong when Heinz baked beans no longer have enough salt and sugar to satisfy my cravings and I add sugar and salt to yeah. them when I cook them but the wrong kind of baked beans are bland and it hasn't delivered it at all because it hasn't satisfied your cravings well, and that's um one thing I touched on there is that it's all very well cooking objectively a brilliant meal you could have mm. picked the best recipe in the world and absolutely nailed it um but if it's not your to your to your craving at that point then subjectively it's not the right thing and so uh, aim, aim for that flavor just walk home and think you know tonight I, I need uh, I need something spicy, you know, and in, in spice not in a heat way, but in like layers of fragrance and, and you know cumin and f- f- fennel and stuff like that. That's going to just suddenly hit the spot. It'll be well, completely it, different. It, it, it's uh, well, we must, we, I'm going to in that case, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask for a recipe in a minute. But uh, but I mean, I'm I'm I often find myself um, on my way for a meal that I do not crave. Mm. Um, and uh, for example, basically, I mean, I whisper it in my job, but I don't posh food like a, I don't. Nobody craves a ten course degustation menu, really. I don't think. No. Um, too little, rich, too rich. Yeah, but too rich, and and then and then too relentless. You know that if you have a tasting menu and you have the velouté of this and the thing and thing, by the fifth course, you. I mean, arguably, the thing about the tasting menus is they're varied, aren't they? So mm. you're getting everything, and therefore only a little bit of what you really wanted. Um, yeah. So if you've got nine courses, then maybe two of them were the tart and sour thing that you wanted, but the rest you didn't need the velouté and the other cheesy, creamy bits. No, exactly. Well, exactly. And also, there's always. Do, does anyone ever crave fish? Only for me, in the context of uh, something, wanting something, not wanting something light. I don't want to put off. I, I, I suddenly just realise. No, that's really well, dismissive. Well, this is like Jars is like putting me in the, in the boat. No. Any pescatarian saying this guy. <laughs> No, but I know what you mean. I, the idea, so when it's been all wintry, not only, not least you've been locked down, but it's been winter, you've eaten stews, mm-hmm. maybe you're a seasonal guy and it's just been lots and lots of kale and stuff. There comes a moment when I think about a Dover sole right. and a bottle of Merceau yeah. and, a, you know, and it's... Uh, Last night I kind of had, um, I went out and splurged those money on a, on a box of crab meat, actually, and uh, with, a, with a glass of reason, well, a bottle of reason. And um, yeah. uh, that was because it was warm and it was, I, I think, as you said, I've been having... Loads of uh, heavy. But you're craving that cool meat. when you say crab meat. I'm thinking of that lovely white pulled cool, a little bit of lemon. Exactly, it was fresh and fragrant. It had the lemon on the side, a bit of asparagus, you know, some, some potatoes. And that was, it was, as I said, with the fish, it's in the context of a fresh and fragrant meal that makes you feel light, that makes you, I think it's that rather than the flavour itself. Well, and I can see that craving, but at the same time, the problem one always has you go to a restaurant, you order the crab. Your wife has the cheeseburger. I find it very hard to eat anything when there's a cheeseburger on the table. You know, you look at the menu, I'll have this and this. Who, nothing is as tasty as a cheeseburger. So, I was, but yeah, I was about to say, but funny and hard is that's the point is that you you spent ages thinking about the right thing to have, and, yeah. then, and then the cheeseburger came to the table and you just you had the wrong thing. All bets are off. Yeah. It's terrible. Um, supposing, okay, I won't I won't like do it as a quiz like yeah. I crave, but what's a you know that we, we try and what was a recipe that my my listeners who I assume to be moderately competent at cooking uh, with access to a sort of you know. Soup, local supermarket uh, or a cupboard what's something they could cook for dinner tonight i mean the weather is what it, it's warm isn't it it's yeah. warm and misly all right i think um in, in the context of maybe not being able to go out to the shops but having a store cupboard uh, there is a sriracha sp- sriracha lemon spaghetti with chili pangrattato so that is basically a riff on it's 
Aglio e Olio, the um, Aglio e Olio with uh, Aglio, sorry, <laughs> with, uh, which is like dried chili flakes and, and lemon and and just really good olive oil infused with, with garlic. But this mm -hmm. has got massive splurge of sriracha, which is the Southeast Asian uh, sort of chili garlic. And really, and it's, and it's, it's around now sriracha, isn't it? I mean, it's, oh yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's basically ketchup. Um, yeah, and it's oh, it's an amazing thing. And we've got like a sort of three in the in the hat. There's always one on the table, one in the cupboard, yeah. one in the. And it, I went to a, I went to went out to a restaurant. Where did I go? A couple of days ago, and they had something with a sriracha mayonnaise, which I just in a European, it suddenly caught on. Yeah. It's really fashionable. And this, what I've tried to do there, is, as well as the uh, being heretical about all Italian food and putting sriracha in it, um, was um, the pangotato has got sriracha in it as well and uh, some dry chili. So it's got that extra heat bit. So the craving is chilli and heat. So start us on, give, give us a wee bit. Right. About a minute and a half. To right. like, get, how, get your big pan of water onto boil. Yep. Loads of salt. Obviously, salt is the sea, blah, blah, blah. Um, yep. cook the salty as the sea, blah, 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 he says. People believe, chefs believe you must cook pasta in water that's as salty as the sea. Gennaro, uh, Gennaro said it. So it was a Gennaro boom. boom. So bish bosh, like a couple of handfuls of good, good yeah, salt in there. Stick that on. Um, while that's happening, uh, wide pan, loads of uh, extra virgin olive oil, um, warm some sliced garlic very, very slowly so it's cooking, warming, but not burning. Mm -hmm. uh, separate pan, much higher heat, bit more oil, uh, breadcrumbs that you've torn to the size of your nail, make those golden, squeeze in a uh, few tablespoons of sriracha, some dry chili flakes, bit of garlic, take it off the heat, those are your... Nice chewy chili Lovely. hits, um, and then meanwhile your other oil is nicely infused with garlic. Loads more sriracha in there as well. Um, toss the pasta through, cook pasta through it. A little bit of pasta water, and again, as, it, as, as we're told on the internet. Yeah, um, it, it and is, squeeze it. There was a funny Twitter meme the other day about someone going, "Oh no, I forgot to reserve some of the pasta water to make an emulsion with my Thank sauce. You. I can never forgive myself." And it's true. I thought, "Oh no, my wife or sometimes this bad pasta's done. Is it splot?" No. Oh, she's let the water Save go. The water. I think they're, to... they're selling it at the supermarket now. I'm sure. It's some Italian, you know these Italians. They create a mystique around their cooking that isn't there. But anyway, yes, you do that. Yeah, and so that's it. You know, it's, it's basically uh, tossing the the spaghetti in the nicely sriracha and infused garlic oil with some lemon juice, and then finish that with your chewy, crunchy, ch extra hit of chili with a pango tart over the top. And that's which, and which, which craving is that going to say? Chili and heat, because it's nice and warm. It's hot. You want to sort of sweat it, but out. It's Friday night. You're kind of making yourself feel good. Chili. Yummy, perfect, with a glass of... Oh, it's got to go for the cheese. Uh, let's go to the Riesling on Gewürztraminer. Mm. 